Okay, so we are on 2.3 day two, remainder and factor theorems. We have an opener here to start. Go ahead and pause the video, do the opener on your own, and then come back and check to see how you did. All right, A says use thin synthetic division to evaluate the function when x is negative 2. So first thing you should notice that your answer is a number. You're evaluating it. You're not dividing a polynomial by a polynomial, and you're using synthetic division here. So using negative 2 as my c value, 1, 5, 6, drop the 1, multiply its negative 2, add its 3, multiply its negative 6, add its 0. So f of negative 2 is 0. I just evaluated it. I got zero. Write it in factored form. So because I use synthetic substitution, synthetic division um, to do this, I could also see my factors. I know one of my factors is x. Well, I should put f of x equals. f of x equals. All right, so I know that one of my zeros is negative 2. That means that x plus 2 is a factor. And my other factor is right here, x plus 3. Now, you could have also said, all right, let me factor this. Two numbers that multiply to give me 6, add to give me 5, or 3 and 2, and then gotten them right here, right? But I didn't have to do that because I knew how to read what I just did. Find all of the zeros. So the zeros are x equals negative 2 and x equals negative 3. Okay. First thing we're going to talk about is the remainder theorem. The remainder theorem says if a polynomial, which we'll just call it f of x, is divided by x minus c, then the remainder is r equals f of c. So that's just saying whatever you plug in for the c value, that's going to be the last number is your remainder. Okay. All right. To use the remainder theorem to find the remainder <clears throat> when the polynomial is divided by the given linear binomial. So if you look, it's linear binomial, linear binomial. I can use synthetic division. All right, so this time my c value is 1 because this is a linear binomial of dividing by x minus 1, right? This right here was x equals negative 2. Okay, so I'm using 1. My coefficient on x to the fourth is 1. On x cubed, there isn't anything because there is no x cubed. On x squared is negative 3. There are no x's, so 0. Constant 1. Drop this first one. Multiply that's 1. Add that's 1. Multiply that's 1. Add that's negative 2. Multiply that's negative 2. Add that's negative 2. Multiply that's negative 2. Add that's negative 1. So therefore, the remainder is negative 1. And we already know that, right? Like we did this in our previous notes where we wrote this out as a polynomial divided by a polynomial is a polynomial. But notice this one's just saying use the remainder theorem to find the remainder. Because the polynomial is x cubed plus x squared minus 2x minus 2 plus negative 1 over x minus 1. All right, next one. 2, 3, negative 8, 3. And my c value is negative 3. Drop the 2, negative 6, negative 3, 9, 1, negative 3, 0. So this time my remainder is 0. Okay, let's move on to the factor theorem. The factor theorem says that a polynomial f of x has a factor of x minus c if and only if f of c is 0. So only if you get 0 right here. In other words, x minus c is a factor if there's no remainder when dividing. So if we look at the last two, x plus 3 is a remainder of this polynomial, or sorry, is a factor of this polynomial. x minus 1 is not a factor of this polynomial because there's a remainder. Okay, use the factor theorem to determine if the binomial is a factor of the polynomial. Okay, so I want to know if x minus 3 is a factor. So I'm going to use 3 with synthetic division, 2, negative 3, negative 10, 3, drop the 2, that's 6, add, that's 3, multiply, that's 9, add, that's negative 1, multiply, that's negative 3, add, that's 0. So is x minus 3 a factor? Yes. 
Let's explain why. Because the remainder is zero. All right, next one. I'm going to use synthetic division with a negative 2. Now, people always ask, they're like, wait, how do you know whether to use a 2 or a negative 2? If it says divide by x plus 2 or divide by x minus 6 or divide by x plus 4, you are, what people look at it is, is taking the opposite of that value. And it's because it's in the form x minus c. So this is x minus a negative 2. But if it says where x is 5, you use 5. If not, if it says where you're dividing by this, you use this. Okay. Hopefully that helps a little bit. All right. Now your coefficients. 2, 4, negative 1, 0, 9. Drop your 2, negative 4, 0, 0, negative 1, 2, 2, negative 4, 5. No, x plus 2 is not a factor because the remainder is not 0. Remainder is 5. No, remainder is 5. Okay. Next one, given that x plus 2 is a factor. So I'm telling you right now this is a factor. That means the rain, remainder will be 0. Factor f of x completely and then find the zeros. So we did do this in the previous notes, except for we had to do long division because we didn't know that we could use synthetic division yet. But now I say, can I use synthetic division? Yes. I can use synthetic division because x plus 2 is a linear binomial. So I'm going to synthetically divide with negative 2. 2, negative 3, negative 11, 6. Drop the 2. Multiply, that's negative 4. Add, that's negative 7. Multiply, that's 14. Add, that's 3. Negative 6, 0. Okay. So now I'm going to look back to see what my direction said. Factor f of x completely, then find all the zeros. Okay, so it's factor f of x completely. So I have f of x equals. My first factor was that x plus 2. And now I have this polynomial right here which I started off at an x cubed, so this is an x squared, and this is an x, this is a constant, and obviously that's my remainder there. So now I also have a factor of 2x squared minus 7x plus 3. Is this factored completely? No, because the second polynomial is still factorable, so I still have to factor this. So I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to give me 6 and add to give me negative 7. I'm going to do negative 6 times negative 1 is 6, and if you add them, you get negative 7. Divide by the lead coefficient, which is 2. Simplify any fractions that are simplifiable. So now I have f of x equals x plus 2 times x minus 3 times 2x minus 1. So now I'm factored completely. Don't forget f of x equals. This has f of x equals. Okay, now I need to find, uh, then find the zeros. So now I need to find all my zeros. So I'm going to set each factor equal to zero and solve. X equals negative 2. X equals 3. X equals 1 half. That's by setting each one of those factors equal to zero. All right, last one. Given that polynomial has zeros at negative 4 and 1, Factor f of x completely and then find the other zeros. Okay, so I'm going to start writing my answer already. Because I know if I have a 0 at negative 4, then x plus 4 must be a factor. If I have a 0 of 1, then x minus 1 must be a factor. And now I just need my third factor that's probably going to end up being factorable. I don't know yet, though. All right, I'm going to use synthetic division with the negative 4. 1, and I could have done 1 first. It doesn't matter. 1, 3, 3, 21, negative 28. All right, drop the 1, multiply that's negative 4, add that's negative 1. Multiply that's 4, add that's 7. Multiply that's negative 28, 
add that's negative seven, multiply that's 28. Let's make, let's, I wanna point out something. Let's say I thought that was 26. I should know that I did something wrong because I, I said it's a zero. I'm supposed to get zero. Okay. All right, so, so far it's factored to x plus four times this polynomial, x cubed minus x squared plus seven, x plus seven, but I know that I was given another zero, so I'm gonna continue on, because you're not looking at this anymore. I'm gonna continue on with a zero of one. Drop this one, multiply that's one, add that zero. Multiply that's zero, add that seven, multiply that seven, add that zero. So there's my remainder, this is my last polynomial. So remember, this was an x to the fourth, this was an x cubed, so this is an x squared. All right, so I have x squared plus 0x plus 7, which is just x squared plus 7, which I was assuming that would be factorable, and it is not factorable. x squared plus 7 is not factorable. It's not, it's two terms, so it would just be a difference of squares, which it is not. All right, so I am completely factored. Then find the other zeros. So I'm not gonna say x equals negative four, x equals one, they already gave me those. So I'm not listing those, I'm just gonna set my final factor equal to zero. x squared equals negative seven, square root to solve. Don't forget plus or minus. x equals plus or minus, I need the square root of negative seven. Well, it's a negative number, so I know i is in my answer. And now it's just the square root of seven. Can I simplify square root of seven? No, so I leave it as root seven. So plus or minus i root seven. All right, that's it for these notes. You can go ahead and get started.